Hello folks, welcome to the channel and welcome to the man cave. We've had a little bit of a move around today. Behind the camera, I've got my BMW R1250 GS. Just had to push that to the top end of the garage or man cave just to accommodate this rather massive machine which is parked next to me, which is a BMW K1600 GTL. So I've had this bike now for about three days. It's been kindly lent to me by a very nice chap. Shall we just call him? Mr. James, thank you very much, Mr. James. So he's actually had this 2023 K1600 GTL for about three weeks now. He bought it from our local BMW dealer. He did actually have a R1250 GS before that 1250, but he had that for about three months, rode his friend's 1600, liked that so much, he chopped his GS in for the K1600. So yeah, he's had it for about three or four weeks and it's only done about 175 miles. He's a bit of a long distance chap when he gets off the island. So he kindly offered me to do a little bit of review on it. So here we go. I've got a few notes on my phone, so please excuse me as I look down just to make sure we cover everything because it's a big bike with big numbers and we've got a lot to get through. So the K1600 was launched all the way back in 2011 and this version, the 2023 version, is Euro 5 compliant and they've actually got sort of four kind of versions of the K1600. You've got the GT, the GTL, then you have the Bagger, and then you have at the top, you have the Grand America. So the GTL comes in a variety of flavors, i.e. colors, and this one is the Black Storm Metallic, and it has been specced with the Comfort Pack, which is another 1,600 pounds, and that Comfort Pack comes with BMWs. Let's just call it there quick shifter. It's got keyless ride, and then we have engine bars and some additional LED lights. So everything is large when it comes to talking about the K1600 GTL. And firstly, that includes the price. So sit down, take a breath, and the price UK retail plus VAT is £24,215. Gulp. Yeah, everything is large. It weighs 358 kilos. Fuel-wise, it'll take 26.5 litres. And the range of that until you hit reserve is going to give you about 240 miles. And then from reserve, you've got an extra 40 miles. So theoretically, according to BMW's own figures, we're looking at a range until you have to push it. Push it. And I certainly wouldn't want to push this big beast and you've got a range of 280 miles. But those of you who've got these bikes, please put any comments in the comment section down below because I don't think you're gonna get 280 miles uh, out of this bike if you're riding it as I would want to ride the bike. Let's, let's just leave it at that. The headlight, it's a massive headlight and BMW call it an adaptive headlight. So basically what it tries to maintain within the limits of the system is to give you the best illumination of the road ahead that it can possibly do. So the headlight can pivot up down, left and right. So as you're accelerating, decelerating, or going around the corner, it tries to position the light at the best position that it possibly can do for you, the rider, to give you the best view of the road at night time. But sadly, the weather's been terrible the last 24 hours, and it's been raining, thunderstorms, and I didn't want to take the bike out at night time to test it because it's immaculate, and I didn't want to get it dirty for Mr. James. But if you've got one of these bikes, please make any comments in the comment section down below as to how good or not so good these adaptive headlights are on the 1600. The bike also has sets of wings. Well, that's what I'm gonna call them anyway. So if you're riding along and you're feeling a little bit warm, what you can do is set these, there's one on either side, and you can just pivot them out and they just basically direct air from the front of the bike and then scoop it through up towards you, the rider, hopefully cooling you down a little bit more. As standard comes with a seat height of 750 millimeters, but this bike here has been specced with the higher seat, which is 780 millimeters. And if you're slightly taller or you wanna go higher than that, you can actually go up to a seat height of 810 millimeters. And obviously not forgetting the pillion with the bike outside, we can see that there is a lovely backrest mounted to the top box and the pillion seat itself is ginormous. So I would have thought that it's a very comfortable place to be and both the pillion and the rider have rubberized footrests. So that should be nice and comfortable. So the TFT is also rather large. It's 10 and a quarter inches. And with your phone, if you use the BMW connectivity app, and that would actually be a separate video. So I'm not gonna cover that here. And then basically throw your uh, map and your GPS 
uh, directions, etc., onto the screen, and then you can have either full screen of the map or you can do split screen as well. So it's a rather clever system, but again, I haven't used it. Make any comments in the comments section down below if you've used it, and again, is it any good? But it's a massive screen, 10 and a quarter inches, ginormous. As a Grand Tour, the GTL comes with lots of carrying capacity, so you're looking at about 160 litres of carrying capacity, so that's the side cases, and as it's the L version, that comes also with the top box, and the top box is rather nicely lined with a very plush carpet. Surprisingly, when you've paid £24,000 for the bike, BMW rather stingily don't actually provide you with separate inner bags for the side cases or the top box. So you've got to open your wallet again for Mr. BMW to remove more money from your wallet. And I believe the side cases or the inners uh, and the top box inners are going to set you back about 400 quid. But I'm not sure on that. If I'm wrong, I'll put something up here on the screen just to let you know. But come on, BMW, you've paid all that money for the bike. Why, why, why don't you just supply those as standard? So we come to the star of the show of the GTL and this is undoubtedly the engine. So it's a six cylinder engine. CC wise, it's 1,649 cc's, massive. And it produces 160 horsepower and 180 Newton meters of torque. And it is turbine smooth, really, really nice. I love that engine. And what does it sound like, I hear you ask? Well, this is what it sounds like. Yes, very nice, very nice. So those of you that are curious as to, well, how fast does this rather large machine go? Well, I'll tell you how fast it goes. BMW say over 200 kilometers per hour, but I've had a look on YouTube. Some chap or chapess posted a video of them riding this pretty much flat out on the motorway, and it was just going past 150 miles per hour. So it was near the top end of the rev range in sixth gear. So yeah, it's not a slow machine, so it should top about 150 miles an hour. So yeah, pretty impressive for such a big machine. So that's it folks, that's all the specifications done that I think you need to know. So what we're gonna do now is don my riding kit, go out for a ride, and I won't be doing 150 miles an hour. Where I live, we've got a 40 mile an hour speed limit. It's not my bike, it's done 175 miles in three or four weeks. So here we go. So there we have the K1600 GTL looking very fine in the sunlight. So I'm five foot nine, about 85 kilos, and I can get my leg over it absolutely no problem at all. And the first thing you're going to notice is it is a bit of a heavy beast, 358 kilos. So we are keyless ride, so I've got the key in my pocket somewhere. Oh, listen to that. Absolutely creamy smooth very turbine kind of sounding engine isn't it very nice and absolutely no vibration whatsoever so five foot nine uh, this seat on here is the high seat but having ridden it yesterday and today at uh, five foot nine it's certainly the right height for me and it is so comfortable that seat is so comfortable a lot of the youtubers who've ridden these bikes say the 750 mil seat is just makes it a little bit low the angle of your thigh, knee and tibia, fibia, it's all a little bit, bit wrong really. So they say go for the high seat and that just takes the stress off everything. So got a full tank of fuel, first gear. The gearbox is a little bit clunky and the first thing you've got to do is make sure you don't stall it. So I've already stalled it once yesterday. Mr. James has stalled it a couple of times and you need about 1500 to 2000 RPM and then you go away you go. The gearbox, yeah the gearbox is a tad on the clunky side. Bearing in mind this is a brand new bike and it's still being run in so we've done 223 miles. I put about 50 miles on it or so and the first 200 miles you can take it up to 5,000 revs and then above that you can take it up to 6,000 revs and then that'll be pretty much run in. But yeah once you start moving that way disappears but the star of the show which is what we're going to talk about 
right off the back is that six cylinder engine. It's inclined forward at 55 degrees, got a slightly longer stroke and narrower bore so they can make the engine as narrow as they possibly could. But yeah, very smooth, even running the bike in, even up to 5,000 revs, boy oh boy, it's just like a missile. It really is very quick, even just at the running period. It's very nice, it is silky smooth with lots of go. Red lines, about eight and a half thousand revs. So sadly, I won't get to open it up because where we live on this glorious island, it's only got a 40 mile an hour speed limit. But Mr. James is taking the bike away a lot. That's his plans with his other fellow K1600 GTL mate. So yeah, so that's the reason he's got the bike because he's gonna do a lot of traveling away. So. I guess you get the right tool for the right job and that's what he's going to do. So he had a GS uh, before he got this and he had that GS, like my GS, a different colour, he had the rally one and he had that for about three months I think. Then he rode his mate's 1600, fell in love with it and that's why he's bought this one. So I can see why if he wants to do long distances in total comfort then yeah, this engine is, well there's lots of things that have been said about the engine, it's just what can I say it's just very nice it really is it's got so much go to it even up to you know 3,000 revs yeah yeah that engine 160 horsepower 180 Newton meters of torque so very powerful but the stuff pulling away from the line is the most challenging bit certainly if you're turning at the same time so it's one of those bikes, I think, that you've got to show it who the master is. <laughs> but at the same time, give it a little bit of respect. Because if this does go over at 358 kilos, which is 100 kilos, 100 kilos heavier than my GS, if it does go over, I think the best course of action is just to step off it and then face the consequences afterwards rather than do yourself an injury. But yeah, engine really nice, very silky, turbiney, smoothy kind of engine, and all those other words you want to use to describe it. So going with the engine, we've got the gearbox, and the gearbox is it is a little bit clunky. And having done a little bit of internet research, yeah, it's a bit clunky, allegedly, because of the amount of torque that the engine produces. They've BMW beefed up all the gear, the gears. Um, so the result of that is a clunky gearbox. Well, that's what BMW say anyway. Well, that's what the internet says. So it is a clunky gearbox. Uh, this one has got the comfort pack, which gives you the quick shifter. And having ridden the bike yesterday and today, the quick shifter really is clunky until you get to about three and a half thousand revs and above then it works quite nicely actually but yeah anything below 3000 revs just use the old clutch and it's a shaft drive and when you do sometimes roll off the throttle you just get a bit of um i don't know slap is it transmission slap is that the right word so not all the time but when you come off the throttle bmw right up yeah you just get a you just feel it clunk on the shaft all all from that area but that engine is very nice, very tractable. So let's put it into sixth gear. Not the best thing when it's being run in yet, I know folks. Sixth gear, just gonna pop the visor up, get some fresh air in. Sixth gear, roll it on. Really smooth, very smooth. Yeah, really smooth. It's lovely. I've never ridden the Goldwing, so I can't really compare the two. But I know when I jump on my GS, the GS is going to feel like a tractor. So if you're covering long distances, straight line, and even a few bends and twisties, because it can hustle, this old big beast, it can hustle. But yeah, if you want to do a, a lot of mileage on the motorways, then yeah, this is, you're not going to go too far wrong with this. And I've not ridden the, um, it's a bit of a <laughs> transmission slap there. I've not ridden the Goldwing, so I don't know how it compares to this. Again, I'm not using the, I'm not using the quick shifter. That's the word. I'm not using the quick shifter. Sort of not using the quick shifter below 
3,000 revs, it's just not worth it. It's just, I'll use it now, look. It's just a bit, bit clunky. Certainly on the way down. But once you've, you know, once you've got used to the bike and you're not frightened of it, frightened, you've got to show it who's boss. And it's just, this is the, these are the scary moments when you're slow speed, quite a lot of lock on. That's when you've got to be using the clutch, you know, just to make sure you're not going to stall it. I stalled it once. Mr. James has stalled it a couple of times. And even with this high seat, it's 780 millimeters. For me, it's really, really comfortable. The seat is lovely. I could spend hours in this. The reach to the bars is very nice. If you went for the GT version, which hasn't got the top box on the back, so it's not sort of the two up machine. If you went for the GT version, then I believe the handlebars are slightly further forward. So you're leaning further forward. So this is more a more relaxed riding position. But for me, it's really, really comfortable. Also, what I like about the seat is the way it's um, sculptured. So when you do accelerate, you've got that big piece which steps up to the pillion seat and you know you can feel the bottom of your back bum just resting against that, which is really quite nice. Right, let's put it into dynamic mode. There we go, dynamic mode. And everything stiffens up. So the engine's nice. Well, the engine's beautiful. Gearbox is a bit clunky. It's fairly, well, it's really comfortable. And it's just really nice. I mean, you've just got to literally grab it by the scruff of the neck and just show it who is the boss with a little bit of respect, clearly. Because it is 358 kilos. There we go, not using the clutch now. And I use the clutch on the way down. So you can hustle it quite a bit. Always look ahead, as they say. One thing I've noticed as well is the horn is not your typical BMW horn. Listen. <laughs> BMW, you've actually got a decent horn. Well done. So for a bike this size, you know, you can really hustle it around. Obviously looking way into the distance because you've got a lot of weight to slow down so planning and preparation is key going around corners seeing, thinking what's around the corner so give yourself that stopping distance always be able to stop in the distance you can see to be clear <laughs> that's from a previous job so let's have a little chat about the brakes and we've already said this 320 mil brakes all the way around and when you operate the front brake on its own, i.e. you don't touch the back brake, then BMW use the partial integral braking system. So you pull the pull the brake lever and then the back brake part of the back brake comes on as well. And when you do use the brakes, nice and progressive on the brakes, but you know you do know that you are certainly hauling up a heavy bike. Right, let's go. Plenty of go. The suspension on the bike then, it's got BMW's dual lever at the front and their tele lever at the back. So that's been out for a long time. I've got it on my GS. So basically the duo lever suspension at the front, you've got just one suspension coil. And basically that means that it separates the braking forces and the suspension forces from the steering. So when you apply the brakes, like so, you get very little if no dive whatsoever and that just makes the bike more stable. So I really like this system actually, it's very nice. And then on the back you've got the uh, telelever suspension that basically as you wind the power on because you've got the shaft drive, it sort of eliminates the torque rise so the bike doesn't go up and down like this. On my GS I had some buttons down here on the left which you could adjust the, uh, the preload and basically the, the ride height or yeah, something like that. Uh, but there's no buttons on here to do that at all. So 
everything is automatic so with your ride mode you've got rain road and dynamic we're in dynamic mode at the moment and that sets all the throttle settings and the suspension settings automatically based on many many hours of work by the men in white coats it uh, at uh, bmw so yeah so you set your mode mode selector using the button here and then that just adjusts the throttle the suspension setting all that depending on how you want to ride however you can go into vehicle settings and go into the assist part and then you can actually alter the uh, load and the damping settings just to tweak it a little bit if that's your kind of thing so i think it is uh, with the load settings if you put that to minimum then that will lower the bike just to make it easier for a pillion or yourself to get on and off but i think you have to have the engine running for that but go and check the manual uh, i can do that on my gs um, but yeah so you've got no control on the left hand handlebars to adjust or fine tune for your preferences uh, for the damping and the load uh, on the bike so bmw have taken care of that for you uh, using this uh, automatic preload so more weight goes on the bike it gives more preload so yeah so that sort of pretty much covers the suspension okay then folks i've just uh, been home and just got another microphone to pop in the rear of my jacket to try and get some audio of the bike because i've reviewed the audio or the video so far and this bike is so quiet that there was very little of that beautiful sounding six cylinder six cylinder coming out on video so i've been home put another microphone in my bottom of my jacket there my map pocket and would you adam and eve it the heavens are about to open and it's raining so we're just going to continue with the video so just moving quickly on then in relation to the suspension i found the suspension really good actually uh, the roads where i live are not particularly brilliant and for the speeds that i've been doing yeah very compliant in road mode and even in dynamic mode when you switch uh, from road to dynamic you do notice the change the bike firms up you know as though you're ready to give it a bit of beans and go a bit quicker a bit more progressive um, but yeah i found the suspension fine a uh, road mode it going over speed bumps very nice very comfortable other people have moaned about it but yeah i found it uh, absolutely no problem at all so as far as i'm concerned bmw have done a very good job of putting the suspension on the bike for the bike that weighs 358 kilos so in my book a uh, good job bmw so let's just very quickly before the heavens totally open and i've got to go and wash the bike for mr james before he goes away on sunday talk about the rest of the bike then so accessories wise and all the other bits of equipment so we've got a, a big screen at the front here electric button here so you've got to hold the button in to go up and you can notice the wind noise straight away decreasing and maybe the audio is going to get quieter as well and let me just open my helmet so there we go i'm in a bubble of calm but people have said on the internet and i've noticed since i've had the bike for the last couple of days that the wind going over the top creates a vortex and certain speeds you can fit it just starting to pull you forward so that's but i am in a, a bubble of calm air here and then if we lower the screen so I don't like looking through a screen, I'd rather get clear vision with my eye line. You may just, there we go, there's the turbulence there, so that might pick up on the audio, so I'm just going to pop my visor down. So the screen, yep, it's good, but be aware that certain speeds with it fully up, yeah, you can feel it now, just basically sucking you forward with the vortex. A company called Wunderlich, apparently I followed some chap today on YouTube when I was doing some research on the bike, under it to a screen with some cutouts just on the edges here and that apparently just solves the problem so go and check them out uh, mirrors absolutely no problems with the mirrors i don't know if they're electrically heated in the colder months in the winter months but it's a manual job if you want to adjust them there's no electronic adjustment for them but they give a really nice view uh, out to the rear so no issues with that then coming back at the switch gear switch gears typical bmw yeah very good no complaints there it's not backlit but i don't think any bmw switch gear is backlit and adjustable span lever thing reach for the clutch which is hydraulic and the brake and i've got diddy hands but yeah more than happy with that uh, cruise control is the standard cruise control no radar control for the bike 
and apparently that's because BMW couldn't fit the radar stuff in amongst all the bits and bobs and the framework for the fairing so uh, unlike the RT Boxer RT which has got radar speed control uh, speed control cruise control this one hasn't this has got bog standard cruise control manual cruise control which I personally I think is fine I've got no issue with it whatsoever so switch gear is pretty good as well uh, we've got an R button here which is for reverse you've got to put it in neutral uh, with the engine running and then you press the starter button to go backwards very amusing um, yeah and the goal has got that as well uh, or something similar to that and if I could get a put a video clip up here somewhere of me using the reverse you get an R come up here put it in neutral press the uh, R button an R will come up here then hit the starter button and then the electro motor will drive the bike backwards so that's about it uh, what else there's not much else really the mode button is the same uh, road rain and dynamic and there is a difference in throttle response and suspension setup dynamic just gets a little bit tighter if you want to get on it then go for dynamic but road is a very nice plush uh, suspension setting really like that what else is there you've got the central locking for all the hard cases and all the tubby holes left and right down by my lower legs so that's the button on here to operate it and other than that that's that's pretty much it um, what else is there we've got the speakers again if I have time I'll put the speakers on basically they're good up to about 50 miles an hour so you in fact you have <coughs> excuse me you've got four four riding modes you've got rain road dynamic and then you've got idiot mode if you've got the speakers on and you want to ride around town. I've done that and I've had some weird looks, but it's not my bike, it's Mr. James's bike and I had my dark visor down so I wasn't going to get into trouble. So yeah, you've got four modes in effect if you, if you want to include the speakers up to 50 miles an hour as a idiot mode and what else is there the seats are heated really nice standard BMW kind of stuff and then we've got the four buttons down here uh, which are uh, direct access buttons the nice thing is BMW haven't over complicated the switch gear so planning and preparation for coming off the yellow line <laughs> bit of throttle bit of clutch control <laughs> that's the worst thing about about the K1600 is coming off a line on a turn. So yeah, you've got four buttons down here and you can preset those. So I think uh, Mr. James has got them set to heating or something like that. And a button to mute any sound um, should he need to mute it straight away. But yeah, you can do that. And I think that's quite a nice way of getting, of decluttering all the things on the handlebar. So yeah, I quite like that. Now the big thing I suppose is the 10 point 25 inch or 10 and a quarter inch TFT screen in front of me. I'm gradually getting used to it. Uh, personally, I think it's a little bit too big. Let me just pop my visor down. I think it's a little bit too big. Can it ever be too big? I don't know. Can you ever have too big a television? Absolutely no idea. I guess not. I suppose it's something you get used to. But yeah, it's a really big TFT screen. And you can connect your navigation from your iPhone or smartphone via the BMW connectivity app and chuck it up there. There's no Apple CarPlay or whatever you call it. You can't use that. And then basically once it's all connected uh, with your phone, then you can just do the whiz wheel and then you can split the screen and you can have part of the map up here, I believe, or then uh, full map on the screen. So yeah, you can do with the whiz wheel, you can scroll there we go and have all bits and pieces uh, on the right hand side there and all that kind of stuff and then with the wizard wheel you can go back to full ride mode just keep scrolling back and there we go full ride mode but that would be a separate video anyway just on the operation of the TFT keyless ride really like that fan of that and keyless um, fuel cap as well big fan of that and if it all goes wrong you can just with an allen key just take a couple of screws out and then uh, bypass it that way so no great shakes really well I think that's pretty much uh, everything on the bike covered we've got the top boxes as well humongous top boxes and in the back box there it's 
lined with carpet smells very nice yeah very nice I'm not sure we can get two helmets in there again if I can I'll uh, do another video up here somewhere showing that we can get the two helmets in there so there's nothing really more I can say about the bike other than it's extremely smooth very nice yeah what what more can a fellow say I've never ridden the Goldwing so I can't really compare it to that yeah I can't compare it to that but if anybody's got one of these bikes again just help the few people that are going to have enough money to buy one of these bikes make some comments in the comment section down below good experiences or not so good experiences you know um, I guess it all depends where you live and what kind of no problem sir what kind of riding you're going to be doing when you take this thing away uh, but for me I think it's going to be a little bit too big for where I live basically but it is a really really go on madam really nice motor bit of clutch control bit of brake control there you go after you guys so yeah just got to take the bike by the scruff of the neck with a little bit of respect so the roads are a little bit on the damp side at the moment so I am heading on home so I was going to go out for a ride of a night time as I said a little while ago but you know what I think I'm going to curtail it because the bike's got to go back tomorrow and I wanted to go back in one piece so the roads are looking a little bit greasy so I think we'll just take the bike back planning and preparation at the yellow line 1500 revs or thereabouts and away we go without stalling it yeah I think I'm just going to take the bike home and put it back in the man cave but the roads are a little bit on the damp side it's not my bike I can't afford 24 grand if it goes down hopefully we can wind open the throttle it just sounds so good it is quite addictive I think that's going to be one of my lasting thoughts of this machine is that addictive sound and that creamy smooth engine oh, nothing's coming check the mirrors quick shifter yeah nice yeah quick shifter above i reckon it'd be decent above four grand Shifters, a bit clunky. back home to the man cave and I'll give you my final thoughts on this the K1600 GTL so in conclusion then so in the three days that I've been riding this beast of a machine the K1600 GTL what do I think <laughs> it's a really nice bike but if I'm being perfectly honest for where I live and what I use a motorbike for it would not be at the top of my list for something to go down to the BMW dealer and purchase because it's not right for me basically but if I was doing lots of European trips that kind of thing tons of mileage on the motorways and I wanted a bit of fun through the twisties then I think this would be an absolutely ideal machine but I won't be doing that so the machine is not for me but it is a superb bit of engineering so let's just bring this to a close then so obviously i didn't ride any motorways because we haven't got any motorways here so i didn't get to see what the bike was like at sort of motorway speeds 
but I would suspect, bearing in mind what we said about the screen and the vortex, I would suspect with that engine it'd be just sat there purring long. So I think it would be really good on the motorways if you can sort that screen out. Obviously, it's a heavy bike. Um, goes without saying really but it does hustle through the bends for a big bike really well so I was very surprised about that so you can have a bit of fun on it maybe a bit more fun than a Goldwing I don't know but again guys if you've got one of these or a Goldwing and you've tried both out then make any comments in the comment section down below but planning and preparation is the key that's what I've learned in the last three days planning and preparation when you come to yellow line if you're turning sharply then just make sure you've got clutch and enough throttle enough throttle to get going without sort of potentially stalling and then having to, well, I wouldn't even bother to try and hold the bike up. I would just step off it and then get a crowd of you to lift the bike back up again because it is a bit of a heavy beast. Yes, the gearbox is clunky and we said that all the way through the video basically, but I would suspect if you're higher up the rev range and you're going to be doing crazy speeds as you go higher up the rev range, I think it more than likely, just like my GS, will get a little bit smoother the higher up the rev range you go. But it'd be really interesting to see what would happen if BMW did a automatic transmission thing, DTC, DCT, uh, a bit like the Goldwing. I think this would be an, it would even be better. It would be a superb machine if you didn't have to use the clutch. I think that'd be really good. Pretty minor point when I was using the side stand, I did find that I just had to look down to where the side stand was and make sure that I got the male part on the side stand to then sweep the side stand out. So it wasn't uh, particularly easy to find, but I guess once you know where it is and you've been riding the bike for a while, it won't be an issue. But yeah, I just find I had to, I did have to look for the male part on the side stand. I found the central locking was very nice and Mr. James did say, once you've had that, you never go back to using a key and all the locks. And yeah, that's really good until it fails, I guess, but I'm sure it's really reliable. But yeah, the central locking was a nice feature on the bike. I really quite like that actually. For the side cases then on the lids, BMW use this cord kind of system. I don't know if it's possible to use a gas strut system like the top box, but if it was possible, I'd have liked to see that on the side case lids. So that TFT, that massive TFT, you could do a whole video on that. But yeah, nice TFT. Was it too big? As I sit here, I would say, yes, it was too big. Um, but yeah, I remember back in the day when the first 50-inch TVs came out and everybody said they're far too big. And look where we are now. So 65-inch seems to be the norm in some households. So is it too big? I'll leave that one up to you. But what I will say is in relation to there's a little compartment in the top that I didn't cover it in the video where you can put your iPhone or your mobile device, smart device. Uh, lots of people have said they've had problems pulling the phone in there. I didn't sort of go into it in the video, but I'll try and put a clip up here as I'm talking about it. Yeah, so you have to raise the screen up, I believe, gives you access to the compartment where your phone sits. There's a fan in there to cool it down as well. And then you just make sure you've got the right lead uh, to plug into the bottom of your smart device. And then when you walk away from the bike, just so that pilfering hands can't come and nick your phone if the screen is fully up or not in the fully down position as you switch everything off the screen comes down to prevent the compartment being popped open and some little oik taking your mobile smart device but yeah I didn't cover that in the video uh, but yeah other people have said it's a little bit of a faff to get your phone in there and to get it to sit correctly. So it's very pleasing to know that I could get two helmets in the top box and a helmet in the side case. So that was really good. Just a shame that BMW don't give you the inner bags to put all your wares in the inner bag before you then put them into the side cases or the top box. So when you came to a hotel, then you could just simply take your inner cases out and leave the hard cases on the bike. So yeah, it's a shame BMW didn't uh, throw those in with the purchase price of the motorbike, but I suppose they're in the business to make money. So rather bizarrely, I actually did enjoy using the fourth rider mode. So as I mentioned in the video, you've got uh, rain, road and dynamic, and you've also got the idiot mode, which sort of fires up the, <laughs> the stereo speakers. And they're only, only good really beneath, beneath 50 miles an hour. But I have to say, in a peculiar kind of way, I actually enjoyed riding the bike with my music <laughs> blaring out uh, sub 50 miles an hour. Yeah, so... Uh, I had a bit of a giggle when I was using that, but yeah. So I can see the need for it, I guess. Uh, sometimes you don't want everything sort of blasting into your ears. So I guess summing up then, I reckon it's all about this brilliant 160 horsepower engine, this six cylinder engine. And to me, that was very, very addictive. I really enjoyed opening that up. And I have to say the connection from the throttle to the actual, all the gubbins, uh, 
that drive the engine. So when you turn the throttle, there was no lag. It was really smooth, both on and off the throttle. That very, very nice throttle action. And the engine was just sublime. It was just a really nice engine to sit on top of, basically. Yeah, really enjoyed the engine and it would be really nice to, once it's run in, go somewhere where you could absolutely unleash all that torque. Uh, that would be, um, yeah, that'd be very interesting to see how it goes. And on a bigger set of roads, twisties, just see how well you could hustle a bike, this big bike, through the twisties. So yeah, that engine is the style of the show. And in fact, I'd say it's one of the best engines uh, I've ever had the pleasure to be sat on, actually. Yeah, very nice engine. So yeah, I am finally going to sum up now. I'm going to shut up. So I'll stick to my Tractor GS, which is behind, <laughs> behind the camera. But for super long distances, that kind of thing, um, yeah, I think this would be a really good machine. You can sort the screen out. Yeah, really good machine. Uh, I don't know how it compares to Goldwing because I've never ridden a Goldwing as ever. Comments in the comment section down below would be greatly appreciated. But it put a smile on my face with the engine, just very addictive. Wanted to open it up all the time and I did like the stereo. Bizarrely, I thought I wouldn't like it, but I actually did like it. Um, that's really all I can say. Uh, big bike gives you big smiles at 24,000 pounds. Yep. I can't afford that one. Uh, my wife would absolutely blow a gasket if I said I want one of these. But yeah, really nice bike. And a big shout out to Mr. James for allowing me to uh, use it over the last three days. I think I put over about 100 miles on it. But obviously with the video editing, all that kind of stuff, that just curtailed that a little bit because he needs it back for when he goes away in a couple of days. So that's it, guys. I think I've covered everything. I hope you found out of some interest. It's a bit of a long one, but just put it on a cup of tea and away you go. So as ever, ride safe, and we'll see you again soon in the next video. Comments down below, do all that YouTube stuff. See you again, ride safe. Ta-ta for now.